It's King here, and today I'm actually with the CEO of Proletariat, and that is the creator of World Zomba Nation. And we have a huge announcement for you guys. The game is going live today. So definitely go check it out. I'll have a link in the description for you guys. Definitely go download it, play it. I'll have some gameplay later on for you also. But uh, you want to introduce yourself real quick? Hey guys, I'm Seth. And uh, I have a few questions for him. We're doing an exclusive interview. Should be fun. Going to have some fun questions for him. Try his knowledge of the game. Let's start out with the first one. All right. Number one, do you guys have any company parties? <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any company parties? Yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, a lot of us have been working together for a long time at Proletariat, some of us for years and years, and so we we are a very close-knit group. Um, and so we, if anyone's seen our Friday streams on Twitch, uh, sometimes those get a little bit more rowdy and party ish than they probably should. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we also do uh, at least one one or two parties a year. Um, last year we ended up going down to the Cape for like a full long weekend with the whole team, which was really fun. Um, and that's... Uh, you know, it's we spend a lot of time together. We work really hard on the game, and so it's great to just have an opportunity to relax. We all we all have a lot of like shared interests. We all really like to play games, and we have a lot of people who like to play music and things like that. And so it's, it ends up uh, <clears throat> working well. So we do we do we do have a lot of parties. We were invited to the Harmonics, um, you know, the makers of Rock Band. Uh, they oh, had nice. their Christmas party, and the uh, Proletariat band played one of the Proletariat bands, which was really awesome. So. Yeah, we do. We end up having a lot of fun, and we do. We do a lot of partying together. Okay. So uh, another question for you on that. I kind of on that same front. How long have you guys been together as a crew? So uh, the company we we started the company in October 2012, but the five founders were working together like th three years before that, and then so four out of the five of us had been working together for since 2009. Wow. Uh, and some of us even longer, like our um, our development director, uh, Joe, um, was actually my, uh, I've known him since middle school, and he was my college roommate for a while. Um, <laughs> and so, so some of us have known each other for a long time, um, which is which ends up leading into a lot of it. But it's, it's uh, a lot of us have worked together at previous companies, too, at other game studios around Boston. Okay. I know you told me, uh, but you can tell everyone else, you have a little bit of game history past with Zynga, correct? Yes. Okay, that's pretty cool. I gotta like that. Definitely everyone knows who they are. And uh, I guess number one question for the game that I have is, are we going to expect more heroes in the future like Captain Zeta and Dr. Zombowitz? Yeah, so uh, that's... Um, when we put in the hero units originally, I think a lot of... Some of the some of the beta users might remember Aftershock. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, you, you probably remember seeing Aftershock in the, in the <laughs> game. Um, we... Uh, it's something we definitely would like to do. The hero units are a lot of fun. We'd love to actually make, you know, we've been talking about how to do additional campaigns if we want to do some, you know, new new things like that with the game, you know, because the, the current campaign is really focused on leveling up those hero units, mm -hmm. kind of chasing after the enemy boss. So we, we do have a lot of new units coming in. As far as new heroes, we haven't actually done any design or discussion on those because some of the question would be, hey, should we just continue to push Dr. Zombowitz and Captain Zeta and, and, and Destructor and see, see, you know, what is, what is the next four iterations of those two look like? Um, but uh, we'll see. We definitely have a lot of new units coming. Um, you know, we, I think we've been showing them on some of our Twitch streams, but we'll have some announcements coming up on the next ones that will be coming into the game, which will be in the next, um, like, content update. Well, I'll be excited for that. If you guys haven't already, I'll put their Twitch in the comments below and also in the description. So go check them out. They're on every Friday, and they do. Uh, if you follow on Twitter, they do notify before they go live. So that's pretty awesome. And they, as he said, they do have a lot of fun in those drinking and uh, talking with you guys and being very friendly. Uh, I would like to know though: Are you guys going to add achievements to the game? If so, would they give free coins, or would they kind of like packs or any talks about that yet, or no? Yeah, so we um, uh, achievements is an interesting one. We've been talking about some new potential like. Uh, challenge missions actually and it might come in the form of like a daily quest or something else um, where you basically have to we say hey do this mission but you have to bring two handymen in you have to okay. um and we thought that it would be kind of fun to like just really mix it up with folks where like oh you know or or we do something else where we actually just say like you don't need to have the handymen we force you you just like you get two of them that you have to use 
Oh, nice. Uh, so it's a little bit like randomizing your team and having to like try and beat a mission with that. We thought that could be something that would add a lot of flavor to the game to try and like just try crazy new strategies. You know, one of the things that I end up like, you know, I, I do a lot is to try and beat missions on the zombie side using only delivery men, like having no infected <laughs> and get more drones, which, oh, is, boy. which is always really fun. But we've done this with a bunch of different units. We did one with where it was all... Um, uh, uh, all lumberjacks, which is really funny to try and do, especially if you have anything with like spitters or range units. Um, so that's what we probably consider doing, and uh, I don't really know what it would what it would give for a reward. Um, but doing something along that line that would be either like a like a sort of like daily quest system or an achievement style thing or a challenge mission, I think could be a lot of fun. I think it'd be awesome. I also had a question as far as your designs go. I know you guys have people that create each and every unit you guys do an amazing job with the artwork and the animation of how they move and how they spit or like attack in any weird way i know they don't have like normal limbs sometimes they have like three or four or whatever <laughs> aftershock was kind of strange at first um but my main question was do any of these units take after the people that create them like does anyone in the company have a unit that's like known like let's say you're the lumberjack or you're the fire chief or you're a spitter or whatever you know um I don't know if Damon, so Damon does, our art director uh, does all of the character designs. I don't know if he's really styled them after specific people, but um, when they do talk about the animations uh, <laughs> between Damon and Sterling, our animator, they end up acting them out a lot, which um, originally, you know, it's not that big of a deal now because we sort of have our own office that is kind of private. When we started the company, we were <laughs> in like a big shared co-working space. Okay. And so you'd have Damon like standing in the middle of this like massive array of desks trying to use his arm as a tongue to explain like how the spitter should like spit and like throw his <laughs> throw his tongue around and so um every game studio i've ever worked at the artists um the the sort of like animators especially are always acting out really weird things like they'll just go like crawling by you and the reason why they do that is because they want to like figure out how crawling works so they can you know then animate it and so um that's always really funny to watch okay. um and they, they do like especially when they do facial animation they'll have like a mirror and like make the faces like uh, 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 and it's really funny to watch okay well i i hope one day i get to come visit and i get to see all this fun craziness happen where do you see the company in one year from today from global release one year from global release where do you see the company you guys gonna be doing uh more ex continuing to extend the game, or are you going to be adding a new game to your array for Proletariat and extending this one? What do you think? Hopefully both. I mean, like, we would love to, you know, we, we even right now, probably have a good, oh, several months worth of new units and new content and stuff to come into the game, um, not counting, like, additional features we would do, uh, but we also have, um, you know, we, we've been kicking around ideas for what the, what the next game could be and how we'd want to do it. Um, any sneak peeks? And I hope that we would, not yet, um, but you know, hopefully, as soon as we're, anyone that knows us, we're really open to the studio, so we would probably be like, you know, Twitch streaming it before it's even remotely close to ready, uh, but the, uh, ideally, we would have another game out um, in in a test beta by this time, um, and be running World Domination as well, and we have, we have a lot of like really big, fun things that we'd like to do, um, you know, including guild pvp or synchronous pvp or some things that would take a lot more effort that i would love to see in a year from now yeah that'd be really really awesome now as far as tactical devices go as far as your flare your molotov cocktail etc i know we kind of talked about some private i kind of was wondering is it a possibility of seeing something like a nuke come where if you upgrade let's say it starts out like a molotov cocktail you drop a bomb and you know it just takes out like a small area one time but then yeah. in the future it takes out the whole wave as you upgrade it i think we're we're kind of just scratching the surface with what the skills can really do with with how those things can be used and and what you you know what we could do as far as upgrading them and having some more interesting choices with them um and it's something that i would love to see us expand uh it's something that players seem to be really interested in i think we could we we have a long list of other skill ideas that i think would be would be interesting to add in and really change the way people kind of um bring their you know how, how people kind of handle it um so i could totally see something like that i could totally see an upgrade coming in um later on where the molotov turns into a much bigger sort of drop um we've also got some interesting interactions i think with with those 
specific skills with some of the new unit behaviors we've been doing to kind of pair up. And I, I'm not going to spoil anything just yet, but it's some stuff that we're kind of like cooking for okay. some new units that could potentially have some interactions with that. That would be awesome. I mean, also, even if you guys do add new tactical things that you can use, maybe, I know you guys, are you guys, ex you guys eventually are planning on adding more cities, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, we, I think we have like 40 something in the game right now. Uh, when we did the initial list, we have a list of like 70. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have any slated to be coming in very soon, but it's something that we are looking, looking at when we can start to bring them in and potentially... You know, not even just cities. We've also talked about doing regions and things like that. That would be kind of fun, you know, like doing the North Pole for Christmas and nice. you know, doing, uh, doing. we thought it'd be kind of fun to maybe do like other like landmarks if we wanted to, you know, like if you go to Disney World or something like that is doing <laughs> that is just like getting overrun by zombies might be kind of fun. That would be awesome. That would definitely be awesome. What is your favorite unit personally? Oh boy. Um, from the look side, just like the way it looks, um, I have to go delivery man. Um, he is like okay. his 2d art when Damon did his like big character picture. Uh, I was just like completely blown away. I thought that that was, that was really awesome. Um, a lot of the, a lot of those pieces of art are really great from a gameplay side. I think my favorite unit, um, is probably the outlaw. Um, we were talking about this a little bit beforehand. Yeah. But, like the outlaw is just like continued to be, was solid when we first put her in the game and continues to be just really solid. I mean, she's just basically a mini sniper. Um, okay. So I really like using her. My favorite uh, combination, though, and the thing that you'll see me get, like, giddy about if you ever have <laughs> watched me, like, actually play the game, is uh, if I'm playing on the zombie side and I have my drone geyser, the, like, drone spring out of the ground, doing that on top of uh, and then dropping a delivery man immediately after that, like, on a <laughs> full squad of units is, like, the most fun thing that I think we have in the game. Okay. I love it. I'll definitely try that real soon. I just started playing Infected myself, which leads me to the question, are you a survivor or an infected? What do you prefer as far as a faction? Uh, so I've kind of always been survivor. Um, so okay. I, I, I just, I really like tower defense games, and that's where that sort of gameplay originally spawned from. Um, the the zombie gameplay I think is really interesting and it's cool and I, and I do enjoy it but I just have always really liked playing playing as the survivor so that's my primary um, okay. my primary faction I end up playing a lot of both but like you know my production account is primarily uh, uh, human what's your highest level I guess person uh, in your in your highest team highest level unit yeah uh, I, um, on my <laughs> original original beta account my natural one I have like Oh, this was back in May. I have like a forty something, a forty-two. Wow. Uh, uh, maybe even higher. Uh, but I don't even I don't even use that account anymore because it's like beaten everything. And that was when, you know, this was this was an account that I used like during all of our internal testing and stuff too. Uh, okay. But but yeah, my the highest on my current production account I think is the high twenty. I think it's like twenty six or twenty eight. Okay. How much has the game changed as far as development since you guys first started? I know I've been around for a very big portion of it, and it's uh, been a hell of a ride. But how much has it changed in your eyes, and are you happy to see those changes? Yeah, it's been awesome, and a lot of that is just the fact that it's been great to get the feedback from players and getting getting the game out. You know, we released the game. We released the game back in May. We did it. Um, uh, kind of very early, knowing that we had like a long roadmap. You know, the game release didn't even have chat, um, <laughs> uh, and so we we knew we'd have a long roadmap of stuff in front of us in order to like you know that we, we knew we wanted to add into the game, but we wanted to get feedback from players, and and that's been awesome. Like I think probably two thirds of the things we put into the game were stuff that we sort of knew we wanted to do, and one third was just like feedback and iteration from the players. And uh, the game has changed so much. I mean, like when we when we initially started. Um, you know, the, the, just the way we handled, like there was no PVP, um, you know, you didn't have skills when you started, um, in, in the game, like that was something we added later on. Um, you also didn't get your have the ability to rally, like rally points didn't exist. You like <laughs> could just put down units in a, in like that little square. And then I couldn't even count the number of times we've iterated on just like unit behaviors and balance. It's just, it's. Uh, and then the art too. Like, uh, there's a there's some really old videos of me like originally streaming the game, and some videos that were from our announcement at PAX Prime in 2013. Okay. Um, 
and you can see like the old UI and the old art and just like looks, you know, the, the cities look the same and the units look the same because those really haven't changed. But like the actual like user interface art and stuff like that is just like has gone, has come so far in that amount of time. You guys have also added some really sick sound effects for each of the characters now. And I just noticed that when I was putting, I normally don't play the volume to be honest. And it's because I get annoyed because I hear it for so long because I play for hours. And I, I it's just the same background music, which is fine. It's, I do the same thing with Clash. I never play with the music on. I don't know. Some people like it. I'm one of the people who like to listen to regular music while I play games. But I've actually been really enjoying the sound effects you guys added for the Gunners. Um, the Desperado sounds insane. The professional sounds so awesome. Like, just the Gunner girls are really cool. And all the other guys sound cool, too. Yeah, we, um, we, uh, we partnered up... Well, with a really great um, uh, sound person here in Boston, and he did a bunch of awesome contract work for us. And we um, we did all the voiceovers too, which we thought initially we were kind of worried about when we did them because we thought it'd be kind of weird that like the zombies would actually say stuff. But it brings so much life to those characters and gives them such like an interesting kind of personality. And sound and music are one of those things. You know, we have like eight different music tracks in the game right now mm -hmm. um, for the different regions, and uh, it's one of those things where you this, this was the first time we've touched it since may when we did the initial release and um it's one of those things you don't realize you miss until they're actually in and you're like wow this makes the game sound so much more alive than yeah. it did before but like I'm, I'm similar to you where most of the time except when i'm on a flight when i'm flying is the only time that i actually like will listen to the to the sound effects in the game because usually i'm playing like you know on the bus or in a meeting yeah. just don't tell anyone <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh and so uh so yeah i mean it's it's uh, that type of polish is things that are really important to us to make sure it's in the game is just like having making sure it's really high quality across the board on all that stuff all right well where did the game's idea come from why the zombie theme and uh i guess where did it just come from overall so the zombie theme um i think i'm the only one of the founders that doesn't <laughs> like zombies i don't like scary movies i don't like <laughs> survival horror games um I just never have, uh, and so when they initially said they wanted to do this, I was like, "Oh, like I don't, I don't know if I can, if I can do the zombie theme." And so um, uh, I wasn't as excited as these guys were. But what I did get excited about was I made a prototype of like some flocking behaviors. So like you know a flock of of birds or a school of fish and the way they kind of move in terms of their AI, and I kind of put um, this, you know. Uh, I put a little human there and these, and I made them, I made the like flock go after it and run around. And that, that was really interesting to us. It was like, wow, like maybe we should make a game kind of all about this. Just like huge groups of zombies hunting humans. Mm -hmm. And Jesse, our, um, our, uh, like other designer, our lead designer, um, uh, really wanted to do two factions. And that's when we started to figure out like, Hey, like if we do this faction base, maybe we should have both sides. And the game sort of evolved from there. It was us kind of, coming from a background of a lot of MMO multiplayer type gameplay, building in things that we knew we thought would be a lot of fun and then really focusing on gameplay that, you know, I really like tower defense. So, you know, we were playing a lot of, a lot of those types of games. And so that's the direction that that kind of took. And Damon did the initial art of the, um, of the, uh, the actual zombies. And we were just like, all of us, I think we're pretty blown away by it. And so, we were like, yep, like this is the direction we should go. Like, let's go for it. But we did have for a while, like we were talking about, like, hey, should we do orcs and elves? Should we do sci-fi? And we were tossing around a lot of different stuff. And it's just one of those things where you see it and you're just like, yep. Like he did one of the early, some of the early images of the like zombie style um, and just like the the overall concept images for the game. We were just like, wow, this is this is going to work. This is going to be different enough to stand out in a sea of zombie games. Yeah. And the fact that we were doing a strategy game instead of a um, you know, survival horror uh, game, I think, really helped, too. Yeah, I think you guys have a game that I almost don't want to even classify as tower defense. Like, when I first started playing as a survivor, I was like, yeah, this is pretty tower defense. But I was like, it's got a nice different flair to it. But then the more I played the game and the more I tried both factions, I was just like, this. I don't know how they classify as a tower defense. It's I get it because pads, I get, I get that. But it's just like there's so much interaction that you could never do with a normal tower game. And I love tower defense games, but... It's just more exciting and more involved in definitely something you could spend a lot more time on because I could play a tower defense game for an hour or two and then as soon as you know you lose that round it's like oh shit you know I'm done for the day but uh, this you could play consistently and continue to grow your team which is really cool it's kind of a mix of a card game almost with tower defense yeah I think it's I think the 
the right way to classify would be more like a real time strategy. But the big difference is you don't really control your units the way you can like micro your units in StarCraft. But you know, we looked at a lot of that stuff, and and this was the you know this was basically a lot of the compromise we wanted to make. Of just the goal was huge hordes of zombies on screen, either controlling them or fighting them off. And that was basically that was that's how we ended up. That's basically what the game is now. So it's pretty awesome. Now, I got two more questions for you. The first one being, if you could be any animal, what would it be and why? <laughs> any animal. That's a good one. Uh, I think um, I really like polar bears. Okay. Polar bears are really awesome because they're like giant you know, predators that uh, get to hibernate. I think that'd be really cool. Okay. And they, they don't care about the snow. The fact that we have like six feet of snow in Boston would make me really happy if I was a, <laughs> if I was a polar bear. So you'd, be, you'd be very I'd happy. I'd probably go with that. Um, we have, you know, we have a lot of different spirit animals here at Proletariat. Uh, the sloth is also a fan favorite around here. Yes. Just you know, he's so chill, so. That's actually funny. I was wondering if uh, baby sloths would be incorporated back in the game at some point. Would that be a little <laughs> slogan hidden somewhere? Is that going to be an Easter egg that people can look for? There is a loading tip that talks about baby sloths. It's still there? Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> that's always good. I, I always laughed at that. The first time I saw it, I just started laughing for no reason. I was like, that's great. Uh, I try to keep it light in the game. You do. In, in a zombie world where everyone's dying, it's it's pretty light humor. I do like the fact that when your humans die, an angel comes up. But when the mutated zombies die, a red angel comes up. That's pretty funny. I like that new add-on. Yep. But if you could change any one thing in the game, what would it be? Personal I preference. Could change one thing. All right. Uh, so, one of the things that I always really... That, that I really wanted to have in the game that we haven't we haven't been able to really figure out is I always wanted to make the like missions actually be co-op where like two human players could be defending like huge waves of zombies together mm -hmm. so like that would be like I, I like the way we actually do the um, the guild raids and I like the PvP but I really wanted to find a way I would love to make it possible for us to have that um like that would be the one thing that i would you know that i would want to add i guess like if for specific things that i'd want to change um the one uh i guess one of the features that i wish that I, I wish we could go back and spend more time on is uh is really trying to figure out how to make the world map a lot more alive a okay. lot more alive with like all the you know we've done some of that with um with the new activity feed in the in the game now, but I, I just I wish you could see where your you know where your guildmates were on the map and where they're currently attacking and you know how they're where they last attacked. So you could figure out like who's going where and just having more interaction. That would be probably the big thing I would want to do. All right. Well, I think you've sufficiently answered quite a few awesome questions and very well. Uh, big thanks for that and definitely very excited. I could talk to you all day long, but. Uh, for the purposes of posting a YouTube video, I think this is going to be a nice long one for everyone to view. So big thanks. If you have anything to say to the fans, go ahead. No, I mean, just thank you very much. This is a lot of fun. And, you know, we thank you to all the people that have been supporting us and playing the game and talking to us and giving us feedback. It's This is the reason why we do it is this stuff right here. For sure. Make sure to download the game today, guys, and I will see you guys later. Peace. Bye.